Welcome to another psychology class, Introduction to Psychology. And I would like you to do some reading. I know, I know you are listening to the videos and you are writing. On, that is one activity. But I'll give you more activities as time progresses, where this is early stages, this could be the fourth class. All right, let us pause a prayer. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy and your truth. Your mercy is on you every morning. I bless the Lord for your goodness and your grace and your mercy towards us. I pray, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, that you bless the participants in this course, that you bless me and strengthen me. And I pray you preserve the system, Lord, that is uh, now engaged to make this delivery possible. In the precious name I pray, Amen. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at standardized psychological tests and physiological measurements, or measures. measures. Among oldest tools, among the oldest tools of psychology, are tests developed to assess human abilities and achievement, as well as traits, supposedly stable personality characteristics. People who participate in formal schooling usually take a number of such tests over their years in school. You're likely to look periodic exam. you likely you likely took period periodic periodic examinations that showed your teachers how your progress in basic subjects such as language and mathematics compared with that of your peers. If you scored unusually low or high, you may also have taken a test of your general intelligence. <coughs> 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 In preparing for college, you probably took an exam to assess your academic achievements. In preparing for vocational training, you would have taken tests to determine your aptitude for various kinds of work. Should you seek psychotherapy, you will be given tests to assess your personality as well as your psychological problems. Test, test, test. You have to be at a level. You, the persons who have, who, on, who have done just the introduction to psychology would not be able to, even if you, you, you wouldn't be able to ad, administer the test, set it and, and interpret it and so on. But this is the foundation. All those with the PhDs had to do this, you know. So this is to enable you to decide whether you are called for this field. <coughs> the PhD people had to do the introduction to psychology, just like as you are doing. All right, good. good psychological tests measure what they are supposed to measure and do so accurately and consistently. Constructing psychology, psychological test is much more difficult than you might suppose, I, I, I know. And they stand in sharp contrast to the so-called psychological test published in newspapers and magazines that claim to tell you, or tell, yes, tell you how happy, self-fulfilled, or disordered you are, or how good you are likely to be, you know, as a husband, wife, or parent. So these tests are not simple. And you shouldn't allow anybody, any amateur, to set these tests for you or to conduct, conduct them, set them and conduct them, you know, and take you through it. They will give, tell you things that will cause you to worry unnecessarily. The test should be professionally done. And... Um, professionally prepared and professionally interpreted. Um, psychologists' methods have been particularly helpful in adding to 
or a knowledge of individual differences. Every person is indeed unique. You know, and unique, you just have unique, unique can be most unique or more unique, you're just unique, meaning you're different, everybody is different. And phys physical and psychological traits from height and muscular strength to intelligence and emotional sensitivity, sensitivity vary over a wide range. In studying individual differences, psychology relies heavily on mathematical techniques from a field known as statistics. <laughs> statistics is not as simple as it might, might sound. People have a degree of um, masters and PhDs in it. These techniques are summarized in uh, let's summarize here. Many human traits from height and weight to intelligence fall into a, a certain pattern. <coughs> a certain pattern. Measuring brain and other body functioning. We're going to look at that. Psychologists are also in, in interested in the measurement of any physiological functioning related to behavior. They have found, for example, that certain abnormal states such as severe depression may be triggered by disturbances in the chemistry of the brain. They have shown that the feeling of hunger is caused not just by an empty stomach, as is popular, popularly believed, but also by measure, measurable changes in bi biochemicals in the bloodstream. I read this again. They have shown that the feeling of hunger is not caused not just by an empty stomach, as is popularly believed, but also by measurable changes in biochemicals in the bloodstream. Researchers can measure the activity of the glands that influence emotions. The way emotional arousal produces changes in heart, rate, blood pressure, and breathing, and the kind of bodily activity that occur during state of stress or relaxation. Um, it is said that correlation is an important descriptive technique. Consider a question that has long interest, interested um, psychologists. To what extent do children inherit temperament, basic personality tendencies, temperament, basic personality tendencies from their parents? From what to what extent do children inherit temperament? Temperament. Temperament. Mm -hmm. And that means basic personality tendencies. To what extent do children inherit this from their parents? That's the question. For example, do inherited genes contribute to characteristics such as sociability, helping to determine whether a person is shy and withdrawn or friendly or and highly receptive to social interaction? I thought sociability had to do with socialization. I mean... I have never thought of it as being um, in it something genetic and something one was born with. <clears throat> and if 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 it, 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 it professor is agreeing that you are born with that, with a, you know shyness or whatever, I'll add to that by saying it can be conditioned to. <clears throat> The environment can affect it. Your bringing, whether an environment does not, not not does not necessarily have to mean the why the community, but home as well. Home is the environment. I have wider environment and wider environment. For now, how would you go about answering the question about genes and sociability? If you didn't read the introduction to this chapter carefully, you might be tempted to jump to a conclusion based on personal experience. No, children obviously do not inherit their parents' temperament. 
my best friends are a couple who are very sociable and the child is a loner who doesn't even have much to do with them much less the kids at school or sure I know a couple who are very sociable and their child is tight with them and has lots of friends at school so in a sense um, the point is being made that children do not really inherit their, ch their parents um, temperament. A better approach and one that has actually been used would be to study a large group of parents and their children use use an appropriate questionnaire to assess each on sociability and then compare their respective scores. An even better approach would be to compare the sociability scores of identical twins. Non identical twins as siblings who aren't twins. This approach is often used in research conducted by behavior behavior ge genetic geneticist geneticist geneticists are people who study genetics and genetics coming from the word genes. Scientists who focus on the role of heredity in personality, intelligence, and other psychological characteristics. Geneticists. Sometimes they compare parents and children. Other times they compare siblings. The analyses can be complex, but the logic is straightforward. If identical twins are more similar to each other than non-identical twins are on a characteristic such as sociability. And if non-identical twins are in turn more similar to each other than other siblings, then heredity must be factor, a factor. This is because identical twins get virtually identical genes from their parents. Non-identical twins have fewer genes in common and non-twin siblings have the fewest siblings but they are not twins. So get this, identical twins get virtually identical genes from their parents. Non-identical twins have fewer genes in, in common. Fewer. They have some in common, but fewer. And non-twin siblings have the fewest. But how can a researcher assess similarity? In this type of situation and many others that appear throughout the text, psychologists apply a statistical technique called correlation. In essence, correlation is mathematical is a mathematical mathematical way of determining the similarity or relationship between pairs of sp pairs of scores, such as scores on sociability for parents and their children or for siblings with dif differing numbers of genes in common. The computations yield a correlation uh, coefficient a number of that of that ranges from zero which indicates no relationship at all to 100 Where we can stay too long on any one topic because we have a number of topics to cover, which is not, we won't be able to cover all of them. But I would love to give you as many as to touch on as many as possible. The most conclusive research method: experimentation. Let, let us look at it. In an experiment, a researcher makes a careful and controlled study of cause 
and effect. First setting up differing conditions that participants are exposed to and then assessing whether corresponding differences in their behavior occur as a result of the different conditions they have experienced. Both the experimental conditions and the resulting behavior are called variables. Experiments are usually conducted in laboratories where researchers can retain experimental control, eliminating or at least compensating for events that might detract from or, if, or, even, avoid, or even avoid an experiment. Read it again. Experiments are usually conducted in laboratories where researchers can retain experimental control, eliminating or at least compensating for events that might detract from or even void an experiment. Mm -hmm. When the rules of good experimentation are followed carefully, laboratory experiments tend to have high internal validity. Internal refers to what goes on within the experiment, and internal validity refers to the extent to which the experiment can make statements about cause and effect. Laboratory experimentation is a focus of this section, but experiments can also be conducted in naturalistic settings, ranging from forest inhabitants in which non-human animals live to children's classrooms and playgrounds, places where adults gather for work or play and city streets. In a field, ex in a field experiment, the researcher may trade some experimental conducts conducted in the real world. In a field experiment, the researcher may trade some experimental control for gains in external validity. <coughs> that is, in some areas of research, experiments conducted in the real world are more likely to yield findings that accurately apply to real life behavior. <coughs> Examples of experiments in naturalistic settings appear at various points in the text. You know, it's amazing if I were to follow my throat, I would have to be out, you know, of practice, not being able to do anything for the longest while. It was a few were studying, we will realize that I came down with this throat in January, and this is the end of March. And it has, it, it is not so bad now, but sometimes it, it has a way to, you know, um, act up. Just act up. Conducting good experiments, effective and, effective and conclusive psychological experiment is often a tedious endeavor given the many potential resources of bias and other error that must be allowed for. Just as we didn't expect you to come away from the preceding section prepared to design and conduct surveys or even to compute correlation coefficient we don't expect you be prepared to design and conduct experiments after you complete this section <coughs> sorry methods used in psychological research and I'm going to list them Observation, a research method in which events are observed and recorded as they occur without intervention. That's observation. <coughs> Naturalistic observation, and this is a sub-point of observation. Observing behavior in everyday settings or in a laboratory, the observer attempts to be as incom inconspicuous as possible. Participant observation. 
another sub point of observation taking an active part in a social situation and observing the behavior of others in that situation so you, you, you take an active part in it and sociology uses this one too both, both of them well, observation and, and um, both sub points naturalistic observation and participant observation participant observation those of you well you, have, you, you will be doing sociology and I take it that you will do them together you're going to notice that um, participant observation the person the sociologist or the researcher will go into this situation and become a part of it sometimes the person doesn't make it known Sometimes you might make it known to the, you might get a job somewhere, just so experience as we look, we saw how people earn a certain salary, how they manage, how they fare out, how they, you know, and so on. Interview, a research method in which clients or research participants are requested about their life experiences and the ideas and feelings above. Case history. Questionnaire, a set of written questions that each participant answers in the same order. Survey, a research method in which a questionnaire is administered to a large number of people in a short period of time. Standardized test, a test that has been developed to assess human abilities, achievement, and traits. Physiological measurement methods for measuring in a way from come again method for measuring any form of psychological functioning that is related to behavior correlation a mathematical way of determining the relationship between pairs of scores experiment a careful and controlled study of cause and effect in which participants Experiment, a careful and controlled study of cause and effect in which participants or subjects are exposed to different, differing conditions and any corresponding differences in behavior are assessed. Experiments may be conducted in a laboratory or a naturalistic setting. Not every test will be done in a laboratory. Psychological experiments come in two basic forms. Those that manipulate and assess the behavior of one person or subject at a time and those that manipulate and assess the average behavior of individual, of individual groups. Mm -hmm. We look briefly at experiment that focus on individuals and briefly an experiment, experiment that focus on groups. In a single subject or a single participant experiment, one individual at a time is ex exposed to varying contingencies that are expected to affect behavior. An emphasis on contingencies which either are deliberately imposed or, or arise naturally from relationships between behavior and its consequences has been typical of the work of F.B. Skinner and his many other adherents over the years. Much of the single subject research follows these basic pattern. patterns. Ob observe and record the rate of a behavior at the beginning of an experimental session, then impose controversy then take it away, then impose it again, and so again, and so on. We're going to look briefly at uh, that is the experiments that focus experiments that focus on individuals. We're going to look briefly on experiments that focus on groups. Group experiments in psychology typically use averaging of scores or other measures of individual behavior. A simple group experiment with humans might begin 
with random assignment of the participants to two or more different experimental groups or treatment conditions to a procedure that could be as simple as tossing a coin. Some things don't mean much. We do them, but we don't know their significance, whereas there are other things where, you know, well, not just other things, but the right person, the person with the training, will have an eye for it, and he will pick it up. The extent, the intent is to make the groups as equivalent overall as possible, which is important to the outcome. Each group of participants is treated the same in all the respects, ex except for the experimental manipulation. All right, we're going to look at group experiment, experiment on the learning of aggression. Here's a concrete, hey, yes, here's a concrete example based on classic and highly influ influential research by Albert Bandura and colleagues in the 1960s. It's a bit more complicated than the ones discussed above. And therefore more in keeping with the kinds of experiment psycho psychologists actually conduct. Mm -hmm. The experiment began with the hypothesis that young children's aggressive behavior could be markedly influenced by what they saw happen afterward to an adult model who behaved in aggressive ways. Three groups composed of randomly assigned young people, young girls and boys, it's a film in which the model beat up an adult size Bobo doll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The next phase of the experiment was the performance test in which each child was left alone with a smaller bobo, bio bio, while hidden observers recorded the child's behavior. The test or dependent variable was how many of the aggressive models behave. Uh -huh. The children in such, in each case, in each group, would spontaneously perform an average, that is, the effect produced by the independent variable. Additional considerations to group experiment. Among the first things to examine when you are reading about group experiments and other psychological research are the op operational definitions. In an, in, a, in an experiment, an operational definition translates the general idea behind an independent variable into what the experiment into what the experiment actually does and translates a, de a dependent variable into what is actually measured. For example, Bandura's operational defini definition of exposure to aggressiveness Mm -hmm. As a student and consumer, you should ask yourself whether this was a reasonable operational definition of the more general concept that the researchers were interested in. I will have to 
break there. Time has gone. I will pick up there when we resume. I want you to do your reflection and email me. God bless you.